Welcome to the Great Basin Prescribed Fire and Smoke Transport Briefing for Wednesday, November 29th. Over the last 7 to 14 days, we've seen some precipitation move across the Great Basin, especially in the higher terrain of Utah and over parts of southern Idaho, but most areas have seen below normal precipitation, especially up into central and eastern Idaho and Wyoming. Over the last 72 hours, just again some light new snow showers in the higher terrain of Utah. And then looking at our snow depth, you can see the image on the right, but looking at how this relates to normal, we are certainly below normal over the northern half of the Great Basin and even in the Sierra, and only some areas near normal for the time of year. But for the most part, the snowpack has certainly been on the lighter side this year. The satellite loop from this morning shows an area of low pressure moving into the west coast. This will open the door for showers and some gusty winds and cooler temperatures to move across the Great Basin over the next several days heading into the weekend. So for later today that trough moves in so we will see some precipitation and clouds mainly over central areas of the Great Basin. Otherwise winds will be on the lighter side with poor dispersion. You can see this from the transport winds again very light region-wide even in the higher elevations and mixing heights low so we are going to continue to see some of those valley inversions. Temperatures will be generally near or just below normal across the Great Basin with highs only in the 30s up north and in the 40s in many other areas of the Great Basin with the exception of the far south. Relative humidity today will be the lowest but still above 25-30% region wide. As we see these storm systems moving in we will see better chances of precipitation heading into tonight and Thursday. In many areas we'll at least see some cloud cover and some light showers but most of the shower activity over the northern half of the region. Otherwise, dispersion will be improved across parts of Nevada and southern areas as winds and precipitation get kicked up in those areas. So transport winds, again, will be picking up in the Sierra especially, but still gust in the 20s to right around 30 miles per hour in the higher elevations and generally in the 10 to 15 mile per hour range in most other areas with some breezier winds in the mountains of central Utah. Mixing heights will be on the rise, especially over the southern half of the Great Basin. Temperatures will be dropping a few degrees as we move into Thursday and this first uh, front moves through the region and relative humidity will be on the rise. As we move into Friday, this first trough moves into the Rockies, but we have another trough of low pressure dropping into the Pacific Northwest, which will be moving across the northern half of the Great Basin, again keeping most of the clouds and showers over the northern half of the region. Otherwise, dispersion will be improving. Winds also with the second system will be much stronger, especially over central and eastern areas of the Great Basin. So we will see those gusts above 40 miles per hour in the higher terrain over the eastern half of Nevada and across much of Utah and southern Idaho. So obviously mixing heights be much higher in these areas. Temperatures will remain steady on Friday, still on the cooler side across the Great Basin with relative humidity remaining above 25 or 30 percent obviously much higher in areas that we will have showers over the eastern half of the Great Basin. And the three-day total precipitation with these systems moving through again starting tonight going into Thursday. Again most areas over the northern half of the region will see these showers and mostly in the form of snow showers with these cooler temperatures but a mix of rain and snow in some of the lower elevations with warmer temperatures. We'll also see some of these showers move into southern Utah and the Arizona Strip. Some of the drier spots still will be southern Nevada and even parts of the lower uh, lower terrain of Utah, especially over towards the Uinta Basin. As we move into this weekend, we will see continued troughing moving across the Great Basin with these continuous clouds and showers across the region and generally good dispersion. And then Saturday night going into Sunday is when we'll probably see the strongest system, so we will see winds uh, get quite a bit stronger over central and eastern areas of Nevada and Utah, and also a better chance of precipitation pushing a little bit further south. And then as we go into the early part of next week, finally these troughs move off to the east and we will see some ridging along the west, so we will see drier conditions settling in going into next week. But we will see also lighter winds as this ridge moves in, um, not probably not by Monday, but by Tuesday and Wednesday is when we'll really start to see the inversions set back in. So for our prescribed burning activity, this will certainly be something to watch going into the early part of next week. Looking at precipitation from Saturday through Monday, again, this will be a little bit heavier precipitation than what we'll see here over the next couple of days with these snow showers. So again, a better chance of new snowfall, certainly in the mid to higher elevations and even down in some low elevations with these colder temperatures over the northern half of the Great Basin. 
And then going um, into Monday through Wednesday again, we will see the showers tapering off on Monday with drier conditions expected going through the middle of the week. And the seven day total precipitation, again, much of this occurring this weekend. You can see obviously here we'll see some good additions to the snowpack over parts of central Idaho and even down into northern Nevada and northern Utah and parts of the Sierra. The 8 to 14 day outlook taking us from December 6th through the 12th shows warmer conditions but again a return to above normal precipitation um, heading into the middle of the month. That concludes our webcast for today. This will be the last webcast we will issue for this year so we will have no more webcasts in December and we will resume webcasts in January.